Canto 12, Circle 7, Round 1, The Violent Against Neighbors. The scene that opened from the edge of the pit was mountainous, and such a desolation that every eye would shun the sight of it. A ruin like the slides of Mark near Trent on the bank of the Adige, the result of an earthquake, or of some massive fault in the escarpment, for from the point on the peak where the mountain split to the plain below, the rock is so badly shattered, a man at the top might make a rough stare of it. Such was the passage down the steep, and there, at the very top, at the edge of the broken cleft, lay spread the infamy of Crete, the heir of bestiality and the lecherous queen who hid in a wooden cow. And when he saw us, he gnawed on his own flesh in a fit of spleen. And my master mocked. How do you pump your breath? Do you think perhaps it is the Duke of Athens who in the world above served up your death? Off with you, monster. This one does not come instructed by your sister, but of himself to observe your punishment in the lost kingdom. As a bull that breaks its change just when the knife has struck its death blow cannot stand nor run, but leaps from side to side with its last life, so danced the Minotaur. And my shrewd guide cried out, Run now, while he is blind with rage, into the bass, quick, and get over the slide. So we went down across the shale and slate of that ruined rock, which often slid and shifted under me at the touch of living weight. I moved on, deep in thought, and my guide to me, you are wondering, perhaps, about this ruin, which is guarded by that beast upon whose fury I played just now. I should tell you that when last I came this dark way to the depths of hell, this rock had not yet felt the ru ruinous blast. But certainly, if I am not mistaken, it was just before the coming of him who took the souls from limbo that all hell was shaken, so that I thought the universe felt love and all its elements move toward harmony, whereby the world of matter, as some believe, has often plunged to chaos. It was then that there and elsewhere in the pits of hell, the ancient rock was stricken and broken open. But turn your eyes to the valley. There we shall find the river of boiling blood, in which are steeped all who struck down their fellow men. O oh, blind! O oh, ignorant, self-seeking cupidity, which spurs us so in the short mortal life and steeps us through all eternity, I saw an arching foss that with a bed of a winding river circling through the plain exactly as my guide and Lord had said, a file of centaurs galloped in the space between the bank and the cliff, well armed with arrows, rising as once on earth they rose to the chase. And seeing us descend, that straggling band halted, and three of them moved out towards us, their long bows and their shafts already in hand. And one of them cried out while still below, To what pain are you who sent down to the dark coast? Answer from where you stand, or I draw the bow. Chiron is standing there, hard by your side. Your answer will be to him. His, this wrath of yours was always your own worst fate, my guide replied. And to me, he said, that is Nessus, who died in the wood for insulting Dianira. At his death, he plotted his revenge in his own blood. The one in the middle, staring at his chest, is the mighty Chiron, who nursed Achilles. The other is Pholus, fiercer than all the rest. They run by that stream in thousands, snapping their bows at any wraith who dares to raise himself out of the blood more than his guilt allows. We drew near those swift beasts. In thoughtful pause, Chiron drew an arrow, and with his notch he pushed his great beard back along his jaws. And when he had thus uncovered the huge pouches of his lips, he said to his fellows, Have you noticed... How the one who walks behind moves what he touches? That is not how the dead go. My good guide, already standing by the monstrous beast in which the two mixed natures joined, replied, It is true he lives. In his necessity, I alone must lead him through this valley. Fate brings him here, not curiosity. 
from singing hallelujah, the sublime spirit who sins me came. He is no bandit, nor am I one who ever stooped to crime. But in the name of the power by which I go this sunken way across the floor of hell, assign us one of your troop whom we may follow, that he may guide us to the ford, and there carry a cross on his back the one I lead, for he is not a spirit to move through air. Chiron turned his head on his right breast and said to Nessus, Go with them and guide them and turn back any others that would contest their passage. So we moved beside our guide along the bank of the scalding purple river in which the shrieking wraiths were boiled and died. Some stood up to their lashes in torrent, and as we passed them, the huge centaur said, These were kings of bloodshed and despoilment. Here they pay for their ferocity. Here is Alexander and Dionysius, who brought long years of grief to Sicily. That brow you see, uh, the hair as black as night, is Azzolino. And that beside him, the blonde is Opizzo d'Esti, who had his mortal light blown out by his own stepson. I turned then to speak to the poet, but he raised a hand. Let him be the teacher now, and I will listen. Further on, the centaur stopped beside a group of spirits, steeped as far as the throat in the race of boiling blood. And there our guide pointed out a sinner who stood alone. That one, before God's altar, pierced a heart still honored on the Thames. And he passed on. And we came in sight of some who were allowed to raise the head and all the chest from the river, and I recognized many there. Thus, as we followed along the stream of blood, its level fell until it cooked no more than the feet of the damned. And here we crossed the ford to deeper hell. Just as you see the boiling stream grow shallow along the side, the centaur said to us when he stood on the other bank, I would have you know that on the other side, the bottom sinks anew more and more until it comes again full circle into the place where the tyrants stew. It is there that holy justice spends its wrath on Sextus and Paris through eternity and on Attila, who was a scourge on earth and everlasting milks out the tears of Rainier de Corento and Rainier Pazzo, those two assassins who for many years stalked the highways bloody and abhorred. And with that, he started back across the ford.